here and uh, and uh, glad all of you could uh, could join us today. Um, we're going to talk about technology for people with hearing impairments or deafness. And um, over the next uh, half hour or so, we're going to be demonstrating a bunch of different kinds of technologies. And just want to let you know that uh, if you have questions, you can either type them into the chat window and Naomi's going to be uh, monitoring them. Or just turn on your microphone and, and interrupt me. We're, we're a relatively uh, small enough group that um, if there's something you really don't understand or you want to chime in, uh, please feel free to do so. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get started with the slideshow. Oops, just, here we go, present. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about assistive technology for people with hearing impairments or deafness. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks Naomi. So uh, I'm an assistive technology consultant. I provide services to children and adults with disabilities uh, throughout central and northern New Jersey and New York City area. Sometimes I go to South Jersey uh, or just about anywhere right now via Zoom or Google Meet or remote. Um, I provide evaluations, training for students, staff and families, ongoing support, uh, webinars and workshops and modifications and customization. Uh, during the pandemic, which I think we're still in, but I think I'm going to continue this, I'm offering free 30-minute assistive technology consultations or sessions for anyone with a disability. So if you email me um, at uh, adam at adamcraftsconsulting.com or call me at 201-618-2315, we can schedule a 30-minute consultation. Okay, things we're going to talk about today are, um, well, let me get some of these things out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing, we're going to talk about hearing supports, alerts, communication and using the phone, computer and technology access, uh, taking lecture and meeting notes, remote learning, and watching movies, TVs, plays, and performances. So one thing that I, I just like to talk about in general, because I think it's so important, and it really can be used by anyone trying to match assistive technology to an individual with disability, and that is the SET framework created by uh, Joy Zabala. Unfortunately, she, she recently passed away, and it's a great loss to the assistive technology world, but she came up with a great technique for uh, doing things in the right order so that when you are matching technology to the individual, you have the information you need and you're asking the right questions. For example, um, the first set is for the student or the individual. You have to under understand the individual strengths, challenges, interests. You also have to, um, in the spirit of person-centered services, you also have to understand a person's uh, cultural, um, culturally re related attitudes toward technology, perhaps uh, related to attitudes towards people with disabilities, etc., and to be aware uh, of their their particular um, uh, unique uh, approaches to to using technology. Then you have to define where the individual is doing the task. This is usually pretty simple, but it is important because school settings are different from home settings, which are different than work settings, et cetera. Then step three is defining the task that the individual is having difficulty doing because of their disability. This should be specific. So for instance, in this case, the case of someone with a hearing impairment, you might say, well, going to school is difficult. Well, that's too broad. You really should be more specific. Is it taking notes? Is it, um, is it having conversations? Is it working with groups? So the more specific you can be, the better. 
And in terms of technology itself, it's a good idea to consider borrowing, trying technologies before you buy. So I am, I'm going to talk a little bit later about uh, New Jersey's assistive technology lending library where you can borrow items uh, for two to four weeks and try it out. Sometimes that's the best way. Just try it out and see. Okay, so before we jump in, I just want to talk a little bit about technology for people with hearing impairments. Um, a lot of technologies that people with hearing impairments use are the same or similar to technologies that the general population uses. Uh, this term might be considered universal design for universal design. So in other words, of let's say a cell phone is designed for everyone. It's not just a sign designed for people without disabilities. It's designed for people with different kinds of disabilities, different kinds of challenges, needs, preferences. And the fact that two different people could use the same device and use different features depending on what they need uh, is really the heart of universal design. So in other words, we don't need something specific. We don't always need something specially designed for a person with disability. We might just turn on a feature that's designed for a person with, let's say, hearing impairment. And then that device becomes customized uh, to that individual. Um, the other thing that's just kind of an interesting story, uh, I thought it was interesting when I heard about it, and that is texting, the origin of texting. Texting is something that we just all take for granted now. Many people can't live without it. Um, as someone who's old enough to have lived before and during the transition and after texting, you know, it's, it's a pretty amazing uh, transformation uh, for all of us. And it's added a great way to, to communicate. But uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, texting was really not all that popular or, or easy to do. And uh, one of the first mobile phones that did that was called the Sidekick. It had a slide out hard keyboard that kind of hit itself underneath the phone. You could slide it out and then you have a, a thumb keyboard. And I remember working with a, a young man, uh, a college student that was that had a hearing impairment and he had a sidekick and I had never seen it before and I was amazed. And he said that he was beta testing it. So many people don't know that texting was in part, the people with hearing impairments were, were some of the early adopters of texting. So before the rest of us really understood how cool texting could be, People with hearing impairments knew it already because they were using TTYs and TDDs, which TTDs, which you see in airports, those little phones with a keyboard on it uh, for persons that uh, are deaf or have heart, have a hearing impairment. So then it became a portable TTY and we've never looked back since. So things we're gonna be looking at today are supports. Uh, we're gonna be looking at um, types of hearing supports. So we're gonna be looking at, hmm. So, oh, now, <laughs> got lost there for a minute. So now we're gonna start talking about examples of different types of assistive technology for people with hearing impairments. Um, for supporting hearing, we have hearing aids, we have FM systems, we have in, induction loop systems, that's a typo, sorry personal amplifiers, uh, cochlear implants, which not everyone thinks, whoops, is assistive technology because it, it is a type of medical device. So cochlear implants are considered by some people to be assistive technology, other people consider it a, a, a medical device. There's, there's a little bit of a disagreement there. But um, cochlear implants are, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a series of uh, a, a medical device that's actually surgically implanted in the uh, hearing, the sound processing part of an individual's brain. And then there is uh, something that looks like a hearing aid that, that's connected uh, through a magnetic um, uh, connection um, to the cochlear implant. And then um, the individual uh, 
is able to to process and and eventually interpret uh, sounds and and speech and and uh, and and be able to to hear things. So the first uh, hearing support we're going to talk about is FM assisted listening system, and in its simplest form, the speaker has a microphone, a wireless microphone, and that transmits an FM sing signal to the user, the listener, who has a, a, a receiver that receives that FM signal like an FM radio, and then converts it into sound through earphones or earbuds or um, through a special connection to a, to a, a hearing aid. Um, there are also FM systems that instead of uh, being directed to an individual, they might be connected to speakers in a classroom or a personal speaker in front of on someone's desk. Um, but the, the basic idea is that you're amplifying the speakers, the, the individual speaking, the, amplifying their voice and making it easier for the listener to hear the speaker's voice and uh, reduce the interference of background noise. Background noise is the enemy of people with hearing impairments because it makes it difficult for them to discriminate the difference between the person that they're talking with, the person's voice, and the sound that's in the background. So if you're in a restaurant, you know what I'm talking about, or if the TV's on, or if someone else is talking on the phone next to you, you're going to have that interference uh, between the person you're trying to listen to and the background noise. And if you can reduce that background noise or increase the volume of the voice of the person you're speaking with, it's going to be easier to understand. Now, FM systems should be prescribed, set up by speech language pathologists, and I spelled that wrong, sorry about that, uh, audiologists or other professionals that work with people with hearing impairments. In school, that could be a teacher of the hearing impaired. Um, FM systems are, are something that, that should be, uh, shouldn't just be purchased uh, willy-nilly. They, they really should be uh, prescribed by someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, another hearing support is an induction loop system. This is another type of uh, assisted listening system, but instead of using FM, it uses a magnetic uh, telecoil, and that could be uh, a wire going around a conference room or a wire uh, being routed uh, along the floor. Um, and then if you have a, uh, a telecoil equipped hearing aid or a special set of earphones, you could hear the speaker's voice through the induction loop system. Induction loop systems can be built in permanently or they can be uh, added um, to a meeting room, a uh, theater, et cetera. Okay, the next category are supports for alerts. So that includes visual fire alarms, flashing doorbell ringers, flashing and vibrating phone ringers, vibrating alarm clocks, uh, flashing timers like kitchen timers. And a lot of times these are already installed. So if you're in a public building, most of the fire alarms are all already include a flashing uh, strobe light. Um, I believe that's part of the building code, but a lot of homes don't have it. So if you're moving into a home or a college student going into a dormitory, make sure that the, the fire alarms in the rooms also include a strobe light. Um, and um, I would also include some sort of a, a vibrating alert uh, under a pillow uh, for if you're sleeping and uh, Maybe you're a very sound sleeper and lights don't wake you up. Um, but these can be retrofitted um, or, or added on uh, if they're not, if they're not uh, currently present. Um, also, uh, phone flashers and vibrating phone ringers. Uh, the phone flasher is a, a little strobe light that gets um, uh, wired uh, into the phone line for, for um, landlines. And the, um, the vibrator is something that goes under your pillow and it vibrates or shakes your bed a little bit when, when the phone rings. So 
to help you know that someone is calling you. Okay, uh, next we're gonna move on to communication and telephone supports. And um, we're gonna be looking at an app called ASL Translator. Um, there's also relay systems, video calling, uh, phone amplifiers, texting, as we mentioned before, social media, and uh, transparent face masks. So um, I haven't used a transparent face mask, but they're really important if you're working with someone with a hearing impairment or who has deafness because many people with hearing impairments are good at reading lips. So if your lips are covered, um, they're going to have difficulty uh, understanding you, even if they have some degree of hearing. Um, video calling, uh, things like FaceTime or Duo uh, can be a great way for people with hearing impairments to communicate uh, either with someone else that communicates, let's say both people know ASL, American Sign Language, uh, they can use uh, some sort of video calling uh, app to uh, communicate from their smartphones. Uh, phone amplifiers are a nice add-on feature if a phone does not have built-in volume control. And that really applies to landline phones because all, all smartphones have volume control. So uh, we're gonna switch over to my iPad and I'm gonna show you the ASL Translator app, which is good for communication between someone that knows American Sign Language and someone that doesn't. All right, so let's stop this and switch over to my iPad. And let's give you a bigger view of that. So here is the uh, ASL Translator app. It has two parts, common phrases and text to sign. So we're gonna try common phrases and it gives you a gigantic list of phrases. And I am going to say, are you hungry? And here's the ASL, uh, it's a, a video of ASL, um, sign for are you hungry let's just try that again all right there's a little bit of lag in my camera but uh, it's smoother on the on the app then we're gonna go back to the other section where we go text to sign. And this is where you can type in any phrase. Uh, let's say, let's go to the park. And it sets it up and then All right, I'm sorry for the exposure. It's a little underexposed. Let's see if I can get this a little bit better here. Uh, maybe that's worse. Let's try it this way. All right, good. Let's try it one more time. Sorry about that. Let's go to the park. Okay, and um, it's all pre-recorded. So they have a gigantic dictionary of words and they string those together uh, and create a, a one video of it. Um, I don't know that much ASL, so I, I don't know how a, a native ASL speaker would, would think about this, but I think um, it's, this app's been around and it has been pretty, it's, it's been well reviewed. So I think it's accurate. And um, if any of you have tried it, or if you know ASL and you want to try it, uh, let me know how it works for you. Okay.
Okay. And we'll go back to our presentation. Okay, whoops. Uh, another uh, support for using a telephone is a video relay service. Now video re relay services are provided um, by federal mandate in every state um, through their telephone carriers. So for example, if you have uh, Verizon, then uh, Verizon provides the relay service at no charge. And the idea is that um, if, if you wanted to communicate with your friend who is um, hearing impaired, uh, they could, uh, and they have uh, uh, some way to do a video call, they sign or use ASL to sign to the relay operator, and then the relay operator uh, translates or speaks the sign uh, in speech to you. And then when you speak back to the operator, the operator then um, could either um, communicate that in sign to the individual. Uh, there are some relay services that will use uh, typing, um, but then you wouldn't really need a relay service. You could just do texting. So if you want to do voice to ASL uh, conversations, then using a video relay service uh, is the way to go. Okay, our next category is um, computer and technology access supports. And by technology, we're talking about computers, macro windows, Chromebooks, tablets, uh, and smartphones. Now, all of these devices have tons of built-in accessibility features. They're in different, they have different names and different, uh, and they're located in different places depending on the device. But whatever device you have, I strongly encourage you to, to explore the um, accessibility settings because there's some amazing things that are built into our devices that many, many people don't know exist at all. Um, so some of the settings for people with hearing impairments are visual alert settings or vibrating alert settings. So in other words, if your computer is gonna beep at you to tell you that you got an email, you can set that so instead of a beep, you'll get a flash on the screen or you'll get a, a, or a, a written message or maybe both. So um, here's one example to put flash notifications on an iPad or iPad Pro. And I'm just going to go real quick to this page. And there is a whole entire section on uh, Apple's support website on how to, uh, uh, on all the accessibility settings for people with hearing impairments. And there are quite a number of them, including setting up your hearing aid so it'll be compatible with a phone. Uh, if you have Bluetooth enabled hearing aids, you can pair it with your phone and the audio from your phone goes directly into your hearing aids. Uh, I know someone that does that has this, and she says it's the greatest thing ever because she hears everything very clearly. Uh, she can adjust it. It's, it's uh, not distorted and real easy to use. But there's also a lot of other settings for uh, people with hearing impairments on, on phones. And that's a whole section for it. Um, in uh, Windows, on Windows computer, if you go into the settings and open up the ease of access section, there's a whole, uh, a whole section uh, specifically for um, helping people with hearing impairments. And we're gonna take a quick look at that now. All right. Stop presenting. Okay. So here's the Oh, so if you go into your Windows menu and you click settings, you're going to get to this page. And if you scroll down a little bit, there's a whole section called ease of access. Ease of access is really amazing. I mean, there's so much in here for people with visual impairments, hearing impairments, uh, physical disabilities, um, 
uh, et cetera. So we're just going to focus on the hearing uh, section for people with hearing impairments right now. And you can change your volume. Um, you can also change the volume for a specific app. And you can also change other sound settings. Um, and I haven't really gotten into this, but uh, I think you can really uh, customize it even more. Um, you can turn it on for mono audio. And um, this is especially good for someone who only hears in one ear and they want to hear all the information from both channels coming from both speakers. So for instance, if I had uh, only hearing in my left ear, but I'm listening to stereo speakers, it's possible that stuff in the right channel might be a little bit more difficult to hear. So if they're both in the same channel combined, uh, you make sure that you, that you hear everything. And then I can change uh, my audio alerts. Let's get this guy out of the way. I can uh, adjust. I can flash the title bar. I can flash the window. I can flash the whole screen. So you can adjust how your uh, visual alerts are going to be. Um, you can also adjust uh, how closed captions are going to look. Um, in Windows, and there's a lot of options for customizing the way that closed captions are going to look uh, in Windows 10. So a lot of controls there. And again, that's all in your settings under the uh, ease of access section in the hearing section. Okay, let's see, I'm just taking a look here and see what I got left. Oh, all right. So I got to pick up the pace a little bit because <laughs> we're, we're getting close. Um, Note-taking supports. Most note-taking supports uh, involve a human um, because that's really the best way uh, currently. So you could have a scribe who's typing or someone who's doing um, real-time transcription um, and I don't recommend using technology to replace a person for note-taking necessarily. However, there are some technologies that could be used to supplement um, a, a, a human note-taker. And, um, and uh, those could be used in addition to. But um, the most common way of, of providing notes is through something called communication access real-time um, transcription and that's either a, another person in the room with the person with the hearing impairment who's typing or uh, or using a um, like a court reporter keyboard to transcribe everything that everyone is saying in the room so it could be conversations or a lecture remote cart which is the picture the lower picture is someone who's off-site and they have they're hearing what's going on in the in the room and they're transcribing it uh, for the individual uh, with a hearing impairment. So it, it's showing up on their computer. Um, so these are these are two uh, common methods. Obviously, if someone's in the classroom, it's a little bit better to follow uh, for following conversations, but uh, it is less expensive to have uh, offsite a person do that. And uh, closed captioning uh, is also available for Google Slides or PowerPoint 365. Um, and here are two links for learning how to do that. So that's also a nice supplement for a human doing transcriptions. And that kind of brings us to remote learning supports. Um, in addition to captioning, um, there, there's also supports for um, chat. I mean, the, the other supports include using the chat window in your video conferencing platform, uh, doing polling, which is like uh, voting, and uh, and also texting on another device. You know, during the online learning. And um, here's the directions for enabling and using uh, transcriptions in um, Zoom. Um, in, in Google Meet, it's actually pretty simple. Zoom's a little bit more involved, but it, it is doable. 
uh, as you can tell, because <laughs> we're using it today. Um, and it, it does work, work relatively well. One caveat uh, for using closed captioning is if, let's say, you were a medical student uh, taking a school, uh, a lecture in medical school, it's 100% important that all the words are correct. So um, machine supported transcriptions uh, at the very least need to be checked by a human to make sure that they're correct. Because if you had the wrong word up there, then you could be learning, you know, then you could be learning the wrong thing. And that could be not only bad for your grades, but in the case of a doctor, that, that could be, that could have a, a lot of problems down the road. So it's important that a human is involved uh, in note taking um, at the very least to check uh, a digitally created transcription. Okay, so what do you do if you want to watch a movie or go to a performance and you have a hearing impairment and um, you want to hear what the people are saying, you want to hear the sound effects, etc. Well, if you have um, a hearing impairment, you might have a personal amplifier. Um, a lot of theaters will have uh, FM systems um, that are connected to the, um, the, the, the PA system of the system of the uh, theater. Um, you also want to know what's happening when people aren't speaking. So if there's sound effects or if there's a, an off screen sound, you want to be able to hear that too. So you could use something like a personal amplifier, which is a low cost battery operated uh, amplifier that you, you hold in your hand or you clip it to your shirt and it has a set of earbuds and it just amplifies whatever sound is near you. Sometimes this is enough, especially if you're in a quiet theater. Um, they also make TV amplifiers. These are two different systems. One is a headset that you wear. The other is a, like, a, it's basically a pillow speaker that you can drape over the back of your chair or your couch, and it just amplifies the sound, um, you know, right next to, right next to you. I thought the one on the couch uh, looked pretty cool, but I haven't tried either of these but they are pretty popular. Okay, wow. I think we, we pretty much almost made it through. Uh, we're getting, we're getting kind of towards the end. And I want to show you, um, in addition to these resources, just a couple of resources that uh, might be helpful. First of all, um, in New Jersey, we have the um, Assistive Technology uh, Lending Center. It's operated by Advancing Opportunities. Um, they uh, will, they have an online um, list of their uh, of all their technologies uh, that's available. And if you if you call them up and uh, and ask them to send it to you, they'll send it to you free of charge for you to try out. So the Assistive Technology Lending Center is a really great resource, and. Um, and you can pick your category. For instance, I picked uh, everything having to do with people with hearing impairments. And then you get to see a list of all the things that they have that are designed for people with hearing impairments. And you can check them out and borrow them if you want. Other good resources is uh, the New Jersey Division uh, of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. They have a whole website full of all kinds of resources uh, New Jersey based resources for people with hearing impairments. Um, the New Jersey Department of Education also has uh, a whole website of resources for students who are deaf, hard of hearing, or have deafness and blindness. Um, and uh, in a minute, we're going to open it up to questions. But I just wanted to uh, ask or invite all of you to complete a very short survey uh, after we're done with today's webinar, uh, just to get some feedback on, um, on, uh, on the webinar and, and uh, what you thought of it and a little information about yourself. We're also looking for personal stories about ways that assistive technology has impacted your life 
uh, lives of family members, students, clients, etc. So we're looking for anecdotes and personal stories. If you have any that you'd like to share, you can put that into the um, into the uh, Google Forms form, which I'm going to show you now. Um, or you could just send me an email or give me a call and um, and uh, be able to uh, tell me uh, over the phone or, or on Zoom your story. Because we're really interested in learning how assistive technology is impacting um, ordinary people and um, like to hear, hear from you if possible. So if you could complete that, that would be tremendously appreciated. And here is my contact information, website, phone, email, Twitter, etc. And I can move this out of the way. I'm going to move that out of the way. I've got too many windows here. Uh, we're going to open it up to questioning, to questions, comments. Uh, so if you want to use the chat window, or if you want to just turn on your microphone and talk to me directly, uh, now would be a great time for any comments, questions, uh, examples of technology that you've tried, etc. cetera. <laughs> 